Welcome to T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show. Music, comedy, and conversation featuring HB, the Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't care. Now, on with the show. This is Radio Free Roanoke, and this is episode 63, T-Bone's Best of Roanoke Show. HB, it is a beautiful day to be outside skateboarding. Yes, and we got... We just happen to have uh, Farron and Josh Salem here Avenue. today. Indeed. Uh, hey, Farron, hey, Josh, how are you doing? Farron, good to be back. Good to be back. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to see you all again. Farron, I got to know, um, in your house, right. who, who's the best skater, skater? You, your daddy, or your mama? Uh, it'd probably be me. <laughs> you, you don't have to say probably. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. I'm old school. <laughs> who, uh, who, do you remember when you started skating, Farron? I was always off and on throughout my life, but I really got into it around eighth, eighth or ninth grade. And how old would you be in eighth or ninth so grade? So it was like 13 or 14. 13 yeah. or 14. That yeah. sounds about right. Ago. Do you remember your first deck? Yeah, I actually have it hanging up in my room. It's an old 8-6 creature Al Partanen board. It's got a huge wolf on it, a bunch of like crazy space mystical stuff going on. That's the first one you would count. Yeah, that's the first yeah. one I like started to try and learn yeah, tricks. You don't on. really count the little tiny ones at the little Yeah, when out. I was little I got like an X Games board from Walmart complete. <laughs> it's like this real small. And then we had got another blind complete when I was a little bit older. Yeah. Started rolling around more on that one. That reminds me, uh, my son JT's a skateboarder from the mid nineties and uh, the first skateboard I remember getting him uh, had Spider Man on it. Okay. Nice. And that came, yeah. And it didn't come from the greenhouse. No. It right. came from uh, it came from Toys R Us. Uh, but anyway, yeah. that that hung around the house for many many years. But yeah. uh, anyway, so skateboards. <laughs> first day. Well, give us a thumbnail sketch. You, this is the Flying Panther Skate Shop. You guys have been in business, I'd say, for a few months. Yes. Yeah, so give us a, about two months. Give us a thumbnail sketch of what's what the store is all about, and then we'll get into some other things. I mean, we just wanted to start a new store to be there for the skate community because ever since Greenhouse left Roanoke we haven't had anywhere local that we could go to like hang out, skate, buy skateboards and trucks, like get everything you need. So we just wanted to be there to provide for the community and have somewhere where people can hang out and skate whenever they want. And we also like to throw the events, of course, have music play, have people come down, have oh. fun. Okay. Just wanted to. Add I, I a could throw a couple more. things in there real yeah. quick just to kind of shout out the people who've tried in the past. Since Greenhouse closed, there have been at least two things that I can recall, but. The fact that they didn't last very long is probably why Farron doesn't really remember. There was a little place in Salem called Black Cat. Oh, yeah, Black Cat. That was cool while it lasted. It, just, it wasn't Never there very chance. long. And then there's a guy over uh, across from the Salem Valley. There's a tattoo studio. It's called Ironheart Evolution. And they actually had a little tiny skate shop in the front of them for a while. And these are people that are just trying to keep keep skateboarding alive. You know, Stay away from the, the corporate stuff that you get in the malls. And just trying to bring something independent to Roanoke. So those two definitely... Do, did make an impression in my mind the fact that they were trying. I do want to shout them out. So there hasn't it hasn't been nothing since Greenhouse left, but it's kind of felt that way to a lot of people who didn't realize these things existed. Exactly. And so uh, yeah, nothing now actually inside of Roanoke. Right. Right. Those are both in Salem. True. Okay. And so, so we're doing the underground thing and, and trying to get the word out and, <laughs> and trying to make it cool. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad you are. You know, I remember the Greenhouse very fondly. Oh uh, yeah. Back yeah. in the mid '90s, there was a to me, that's kind of where I became exposed to the skateboarding community. And then yesterday, I'm walking up Campbell Avenue here in Roanoke, and I hear this familiar rumble of the wheels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the guy comes zooming right by me on the skateboard. <laughs> so it's still alive. So, uh, but I've been out of touch. So what is the status of the skateboarding community here in the Roanoke Valley nowadays? 
how, how alive is it? It must be. Uh, there's, there's a pulse, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's definitely not the biggest community, but it's constantly growing. We have people coming in, buying their first completes, like pretty regularly, and we we're still fighting to get that skate park built. Okay. But we've also like a bunch of skaters just around town have been talking about getting together and building stuff on our own. The DIY like movement. Adding on to what we have up in Highland Park with the do-it-yourself stuff. Right. We have like ledges and some flat bars and stuff up there to skate. And we've just been wanting to keep building onto that stuff, make our own obstacles that we can skate. Okay. And we've done a little bit of that too, building the boxes and we have a spine that my friend donated. Just different stuff, get people outside having fun skating. So you're just doing some organic uh, building of parks or places where yeah. people can go and skate. And, and then as far as other venues, I know there used to be one, and I'm sure there still is, over in Salem, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Salem's no. probably the best park within reason, of, like on a day-to-day -day driving basis you could go to. Okay. But it's still really not the best park. Yeah, and I fair enough, the one in Salem, I'll be passing by and I'll just pull in. And right. just watch people skate for a while because it's usually yeah I'm there usually quite a has people myself. there yeah <laughs> I enjoy it. Some of the other places faring locally, what else would you say is out there within a certain radius that skaters might go to? Uh, well, we in town we have the pump track. That thing is fun to mess around with. Down. Are you familiar with that? No. no. Big, no. Right off, like ten steps off from the Greenway, close to the existing skate park. Wasina. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So you just keep going down the greenway and you step off, ride around. You don't need to push or anything on that thing. It's lots of fun. It just goes up. The, the listeners couldn't hear you do the, the quote unquote <laughs> for skate park because, right. yeah, the, that, the park that, that everyone really says a, we already have yeah. is not really, it's not for skateboarding. Yeah, it's really a BMX park at this point. And it deteriorated and set, so rapidly. It, it's, a, it's a whole... Set to be destroyed soon. It has a lot to do with as well. the new park that, that they want to build, so yeah, there's a whole history behind that. But yeah, that's where the pump track is. It came from the GoFest. Uh, oh, the the GoFest Go is here. Yeah, yeah. they've had the pump track there a few times, and then some yeah. people, I, I don't know the whole story, I don't want to mess it up, but I know a community got together and pulled their money, and they purchased it for Roanoke. Nice. So now it exists and here. Now yeah. There. Right. And, and, so that's a cool and, little destination. So you were 13 or 14 when you started. <laughs> what would you recommend as a, maybe a, a beginning age? Let's say I was starting over with JT. What would be a good age uh, to maybe introduce him if he was interested to skateboarding? Oh, early as possible. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Definitely. Have, like, as soon as you can walk. <laughs> on a board. Just strap before. him on a board. Yeah, maybe even deck. before. Have a, <laughs> maybe just roll now, side to side on just cross the room. Or yeah, something. and apparently the, the parks that are that are around that y'all have just talked about, uh -huh. uh, I see these ones that are. It looks like a swimming pool, or it's all concrete, and there's yeah. and they're huge and long, and you can really get some speed up. Is there's none of that around here, is it? Uh, the closest thing would be probably Bedford. Yeah. Or Lynchburg has a pretty decent sized pool. They do. And they're outdoor. That's park. kind of the, the ironic part about all this is about, you know, Roanoke being such a big outdoor community here in the valley. Every place around us has amazing skate parks. Right. They just built a, an amazing park up in Charlottesville. Yeah. Like you said, there's a huge park in Lynchburg. There's uh, in, Lynchburg indoor park in, in Lynchburg. Parks. Yeah. Indoor and outdoor. Right. Right. Indoor and yeah. outdoor. You've got, uh, let's see, Bedford is like, you would not expect to, to find an amazing concrete skate park in Bedford, but it is. It's there's huge pools like you're talking about, yeah. multiple pools in this one park, lots of other obstacles. It, it, it's yeah, that's kind of been a mecca for for skaters in Roanoke for a while now. But you know, you're, you're driving for a while before you can get there. You gotta have a vehicle. You can't just uh, yeah. I mean, can't ride your bike. Kid, yeah, right. kids yeah. with enough uh, with with the intention can get to Salem without a car. You know, it might yeah. take you all day, but you can go to Salem, ride the park, ride and come back. Yeah. yeah, ride your you bike really or whatever. And then Christiansburg, Blacksburg, all, all these places, they, they all have parks. Yeah. 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 So that, we, we got to catch up. Yeah. yeah. We are definitely behind That's been the that running ride. theme here is we <laughs> need to catch up. Yeah. catch up. All right. Well, what are, who's your favorite skater, pro skater? Ooh, that is a hard question. I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all time, I probably 
Right now, actually, I'd say either Siba Walker or Frankie Villani. Mm. What about both. David Gonzalez? David Gonzalez was my favorite for yeah. a long time when I first started out. Super He's still awesome. metal, hardcore, just balls to the wall skater. <laughs> <laughs> Always skating a Slayer or something awesome like that. But recently I've really been watching a lot of Siba Walker stuff. It's just super creative and at the same time pushing the limits of like what you can do on a skateboard. So as there's well there's... as doing crazy technical tricks and stuff like that. Crazy manuals. Just super creative big bag of tricks. Well the tricks <laughs> I awesome. remember, Farron, tell me if they're still around. The Ollie. Of course. Right. Well, what's that exactly? <laughs> That's sort of the staple trick you need for everything popping anything else any other trick where you need to get that board up in the air the ollie is the first step all right looking at just go ahead. basically like a bunny hop on the like a bike oh. or a scooter or something right. like that sure so an ollie is just jumping into the air so, popping so. that tail and lifting the board up into the Bringing air the board with you right yeah okay so on a scale of one to a hundred uh, hundred being Fully successful. Looking at HB and I, how how successful do you think we could do an ollie? Five, uh, ten. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, this this question depends. is is totally depends, yeah. it's relatable to the question you asked about age. Skateboarding is about repetition. Yeah, if you're on it every day, you get that relative. balance. Right. And you just keep doing it. That's it, isn't it? When repetition. I was trying to teach Fran on the kickflip, there I ran out of tips I could give him, and I just said keep doing it and that's yeah. that's what yeah, he had to do practice. really all you can do you just keep doing it and then eventually you get a feel for it and you start landing it and now the long you know boards is that are they popular today sure yeah Still? We've had they're more of a cruiser or you don't know, ask about long boards you don't trick stuff on that right some people oh, do some yeah, crazy stuff yeah. on them uh, yeah yeah it's possible if, if it's possible to do tricks on something someone's doing yes. it. yes okay. <laughs> but you're right they're more for transportation right. and, yeah and just kind of Most carving recreating that to... surf experience you know yeah. that kind of skateboard right. originally yes. uh, emulated yeah most people would just use a longboard to like get to work or something like that and then some people who really want to get somewhere will fly down crazy hills and stuff like that and then even some people will do tricks on a longboard i've seen some people doing like fakey big flips and, and i guess more for like and stuff like for that. customers of the shop like who are looking for something for with a longboard they tend to have bigger wheels and uh, yeah. they're going to roll over a little gravel and everything a lot yeah, easier a less lot likely softer. to get tripped up whereas a regular board intended to do tricks it sometimes you can hit a little piece of gravel it'll throw you if you're not right. ready and so you wouldn't want to use this for transportation as much. Right. Now, of course, any skater who's trying to do tricks is going to use their board for transportation wherever they go. Wow. But if somebody's just looking to just cruise, yeah, longboards are where it's at for sure. A longboard or a cruiser board. Or a cruiser board, yeah. Cruiser board. Well, how much Those, longer is a cruiser board or a longboard well, than, cruiser, say, they're a in between. A cruiser board usually tends to be closer to the size of a regular skateboard. Right. But they'll usually, on the wider side, but they're useful for, they actually do have a tail that you can pop or tic-tac with. So you can hop up curbs and stuff like that. With a longboard, you're just going to have to get off, pick it up, set it back down to the sidewalk and oh, keep going. Okay. <laughs> a really good way to pop that. The trick where you're in the air, Farron, and your feet come off the skateboard, and the skateboard rotates in air, and you land uh, back on it. Is, is, is there a name for that? Or? A kickflip? Kickflip? Yeah, that's, kickflip? that's the one I was talking about, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just one flip of the board, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. what it's you, kind of the next step after the ollie. Yeah. Well, actually, no, it might, be, it might be kind of the second Same. or third step, yeah, maybe not the next step. Yeah, probably go shove ollie, it. shove it, front 180, and then either back 180 or kickflip after that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we got a lot to learn there. <laughs> nah. How many, easy. Different, nah uh, top, <laughs> how many different uh, manufacturers do y'all carry yeah. in your shop for our skateboards? Uh, right now we have just two distribution distributors. 
right now. Mm -hmm. So they've got all kinds of different companies that they oh. will send stuff out for. And we're in the process of talking to more people, getting some more direct relationships with companies going. And we're also starting to get noticed where having a few people visited you and dropped off some product. Yeah, we yeah. actually had the, so that's that's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah, the guy from Esoteric Manufacturing came down, brought us some boards, and we have those in the shop. I guess they're getting lighter. They're getting—I don't know. I would think. Well, you know, materials and things that they're made out of. There are they, new, <laughs> different forms of constructions for boards, like some. NHS has their power ply, which is sort of a carbon fiber ply in mm -hmm. the middle of their skateboard that'll keep it from breaking for longer. But I mean, all of that really is a lot of the time just more of a gimmick because yeah. the board's still gonna wear out in the same amount of time, mm -hmm. still gonna lose its pop, still gonna like get not slide as well and stuff like that. And then by the time a normal board would break, that board is still going. It's just completely worn out. This is actually uh, some, some good uh, PR here to get into to talk to the parents that yeah. want to know why their kids want a new board so often, right? Yeah. And, and it's something I had to learn over the years. Farron taught me a lot about it, but as your, your board starts to get the little stress cracks inside of it, mm -hmm. it's yeah. going to give more as you push on that tail. And so you're not going to be able to pop it up as instantly as you right. could with a brand new board that's solid. So that okay. tail is going to just, it's going to bend down more before the front of the board actually starts to pop up. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be closer to the ground, less time for you to build up that speed and pop it into the air with as much force Makes as sense. a new board yeah. would have. Yeah. And then another thing that occurred with me over the years is that, you know, I grew up without very much money. And, We'd watch these skate videos and you'd see the skaters get mad that they didn't land a trick and smash their board in half. And, and it, you know, parents yeah. would like really get upset about that. Like, oh, this costs so much, you know. But I, sometimes I guess a little bit of that might be, hey, that board was done with anyway. Right, so right. I'm, I'm going to grab a new right. one. I'm going to, yeah, but, you know, right. and I, I still don't recommend that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people do tend to also just get really into trying the trick. Yeah. Putting their all into it for hours on end. And it just gets more frustrating every time you try it. <laughs> I can understand that. So people tend to throw tantrums. Well, uh, as far as the, the distributors you said you had, uh, are the East Coast, West Coast, uh, is there a difference? I yeah. think both of our distributors are based on the East Coast yeah. right now. Yeah, that's intentional, obviously, the shipping and everything. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. We get our stuff faster. And then uh, what kind of other merch do you have? Uh, T-shirts? Yeah, we just got some T-shirts made, and they'll be in the shop today. And we are also going to have some shop boards being made soon. Oh, and yeah. Oh, we'll get different t-shirts and stuff. More, yeah, more varieties of t-shirts, different designs. We definitely need to get shoes. Yeah. Okay. Skate shops need to have shoes. To get shoes have, so but you're having there. a deck. Yeah. You've got a deck. Yeah, it's coming. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now, Good. Baron, have you traveled, been to other cities, got to do skateboarding at some really awesome parks? Is that something? That yeah, you... I was actually just in Nashville a couple weeks ago, Ooh. and they had a really cool deal going on where they had sort of a recreation center deal mm -hmm. with like a cafe and an arcade and stuff like that but they also had an indoor park with a skate shop mm. right next to it and you could just go in like 10 bucks for the day with a helmet and they also had an outdoor park and an indoor park it was just a really cool deal see like all of like the people getting off of school and just go there and hang out awesome yeah, and then one of our fun. last vacations we visited family in germany and we knew we were going to get to spend yeah. some time in berlin so we took our boards oh, and got cool. to hit some really cool spots in berlin berlin is just big full there. of amazing yeah. there's one spots. big skate shop that has and a bowl inside of it yeah in, oh, in, awesome. like indoors in downtown they built a bowl to skate in there it was pretty sweet and Whoa. there's also another like little diy just randomly in one of the neighborhoods close to downtown there and they of course have uh, South Bank there which is sort of like under the bridge big old park covered in graffiti very much like Philly Philly's yeah, another big big DIY place skate that city always go to yeah. if they're in the area and for people also, wanting to watch uh, these tricks or see uh, these different venues, are, are these all on YouTube? Yeah, you can Definitely. find 
endless videos of skating on YouTube. Thrasher's putting out Thrasher. like three videos a day almost. The Barracks is always putting out new stuff in Transworld, even though they're not like a magazine anymore. Their YouTube channel is still constantly putting out content that people make. And if you just go on Instagram and you'll just find almost anyone that skates will be putting stuff on Instagram of them skating. You get on a board every day. Yeah. You're on a board every day. Every day I can't be. And when he steps out of bed, he's on the board. Well, that's what, you know, that's the way it is. Yeah, if I'm not hurt, I'm going to find a way to skate. Have you ever broken a bone? I have. broke broke my foot about six months into skating or something like that. That's it? So I was out. How much gear do you wear? Quite a few more. I mean, you Uh, elbow. I just wear helmet. clothes. (laughs) <laughs> oh, no helmet. Yeah, no, Come on, not Mike. Well, <laughs> I don't if know. I go into like an indoor park where they require it, I'll wear my helmet. Or concrete or, parks. You, you, wanna, you want gear. Yeah, or if I'm parks. going oh, out of my comfort zone trying to like get used to skating a bowl or like some transition that's taller than I've ever skated before, I'll put on some knee pads or something like that just for an extra precaution, a little safeguard. Because with the knee pads, it's great. You can always just bail from your board and slide out on your knees. X Games, big stuff, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 The so, origin, you guys mentioned uh, California. What was the, uh, I, I researched this last night. What uh, was the origin of uh, skateboarding? Well, skateboarding first, I think the first skateboards ever made were somewhere in the 70s or, yeah, early 70s, I'm pretty sure, where people would find like surfers that didn't, when it was out of season, yeah, when there were no, no waves, good waves, couldn't catch surfers a wave. Surfers found old rollerblade, roller skates, roller skates. Sorry, with the four wheels, and they would take the shoe off and just nail a two by four to it, and go out in the streets and carve around. Yep, that was when it first started. Yeah, that's that and it was the seventies. Right, yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's, Shorts, there's been several bands. documentaries, and, yeah. and even uh, yeah. there was even a Heath Ledger film that, that talked mm-hmm. about it, Dogtown and Z-Boys. That was a yeah. that was a fictional film based on the history of it. Right. I was yeah. a teenager in the 70s, so I, was, <laughs> I remember skateboards. And yeah, that's the know. very beginnings right yeah. there. With yeah, and then uh, there's even some reports that even goes back even a little bit further, early 50s. Uh, oh, wow. Real pioneers. But the whole thing was, it was skateboarders, I mean surfers who couldn't, the waves were flat. Yeah, so they wanted something to do. Yeah. Get in the way to cruise yeah. on sidewalks. All right, give us some uh, uh, skateboard lingo. I've got, I remember what I was, forgot there. <laughs> skateboard lingo. <laughs> there we go. Poser. Poser would be sort of someone who. That's carried over into everything, really. <laughs> right, but yes, poser. it has. People, it's all become really standard the, lingo. Yeah, it's just someone who pretends to be a part of something that they're not okay. so like someone who like acts like they skate all the time but then you see them on a board and they're falling off every second don't know what they're doing at all something like that yeah. like they might be they might be <laughs> grinding their trucks on the curb just trying to get some marks on their board or something like that that's some Definitely. seriously intentional yeah. posing right that's, there like I, I think it just kind of originated of like people wanting to adopt the fashion. Yeah. yeah. They want to wear skateboarding clothes, like they don't right. skate at all. Yeah. Like, they don't yeah. even yeah. try to make it look now, like they do. It's grown to the point to where, like, the clothing thing is just... Yeah, people don't really say poser anymore. Right. You know. People call it dressing, like, street style, or, like, skater boy style, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, skater boy, I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I looked up all the terms, these were terms I heard back 20 years ago, so they're part of this kind of standard conversation now like sketchy sure. or, or yeah. stoked uh, yeah these yeah. are all things where everybody uses surfer nowadays. dude skater dude lingo yeah, yeah. yeah everybody knows that stuff everybody I, knows that stuff I, I know one I, I, is this uh is this still used Farron? so we used to say like if if a half pipe or something got really crowded and you were waiting your turn to drop in and you get ready to drop in and someone drops in in front of you, they snaked you. Yeah. They still uh-huh. say that? Oh yeah. Oh man, you got snaked, you know? <laughs> Somebody took your spot. Yeah, that's a big term that gets okay. Uh, okay. put on the scooter kids at skate parks. Oh, right. Uh-huh. That are just riding around on their little razor scooters, not minding anyone or anything around them. 
they don't want to they wait their get, turn. They, they get pegged as snakes a whole lot of the uh, time. He snaked me. Yeah. 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 All right. Like, My last. Will say something's wet. If something's you, wet. Okay. Um, what's that? Just like did something real stylish and rolled away from it real smooth. Okay. That, I like that. The, that trick would be wet. Wet. Uh-huh. <laughs> or steez. What? Yeah, or steezy. If what's you she? like really exaggerate the style. Ste- steez is style with ease. Oh, right. Steez. You make it look yeah. easy. Steez. So steez. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> Antoine Dixon. He's the most steezy skater ever to live. <laughs> That's just like if you want to see something. That is the definition of steezy. Look, okay. go on Instagram, look up Antoine Dixon, or go on YouTube, look up Antoine Dixon's Baker Three Part, anything that he's ever done. <laughs> <laughs> well, my last uh, question, uh, and then I'll turn it over to you guys for the last word and to highlight whatever you want to highlight, how people sure. can get in touch with you and all that stuff and any future events. But uh, PlayStation. They've made about, I'd say, 227 Tony Hawk games. Uh, what's your Close. favorite, Farron? First uh, of all, have you ever played one? Yeah, I played two, three, and four on my dad's computer growing up. Okay. And I was a huge fan of two and four. That's funny. I would probably say three. <laughs> uh, I don't really. I don't think we ever actually got to we? work on the computer. Maybe I'm thinking of two. I don't know. And the one in my hand is... Is three. Three. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. Yeah, right, my, so. my brother actually got one right when it came out. He was way into it before me. Uh, well, they still kind of hold up a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. The floor's yours to close out the, the show. Uh, what do you want to highlight about your shop and how people can find you and any future events you guys got going? Uh, we're, well, we're just starting off. We're still figuring it out. Yeah, if you want to... Stay up to date on what we're doing day to day. Definitely follow us on Instagram at Flying Panther Skate. And we also have a Facebook page. Not quite as active on there, but I'll try to be more in the future, which is also Flying Panther Skate Shop. Type in Flying Panther yeah. on Facebook, you'll find Probably. us. We're at 422 Salem Avenue, mm-hmm. right next to Big Lake Brewing Co. and Tuco's Tacos. <laughs> and this other gaming company. That's right. Yes. And Blade, Blade Gaming. Yeah, the corner of Salem and Fifth. That's all you need to find. Right. Especially because the skate shop hour is a little weird right now. Farron's not always in there. But there's a sign on the door that says, if the door's locked, come around the corner. Come in the game store. We'll take you inside. Bam. Flying Panther is kind of uh, the son of Blade Gaming. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. And you know, cool. <laughs> for parents starting out with their kid, this is a good place to come and get started. Excellent. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I'm going to go outside in the parking lot and do a pop flip it until I get it right. <laughs> okay. You guys are great. Excellent. Thank yeah. you so much. Hey, thanks Thank for having you. us. Yeah, that's Thank a lot. Excellent.